What's up guys? Um, we are back with another care video. Um, I promised that I would get a cup, at least a couple out before I decided to disappear again. So, um, this next one's on one that you don't really see too often in captivity. Um, a lot of people have misconceptions about their care, or they just kind of messed up and uh, couldn't really get it right. Now, and I was kind of the same way. I got some initially. And I didn't know what they were, um, I didn't, so, um, somebody gifted them to me, and I didn't know, he, like, told me what they were, but I forgot the scientific name, and I tried keeping them, and I was keeping them wrong, um, and they did okay for a little bit, and then they dwindled very, very quickly after that, and I only had, like, three or four, and then I went out into the wild with a friend of mine to, to the beach, and he showed me uh, where he found them, and I got to see their natural habitat and kind of how they how they they how they survive. And it's really kind of cool. So um, if you know anything about the California coasts, uh, they're kind of rocky. There's like cliffs and stuff, and then there's um, there's not like a lot of sand like on the East Coast. Like you can walk for a while to get to the beach and just sand. It's it's really not that much in California. And these guys live in the sand that's just above where the tide line is, like as high as it goes. And then when the tide lowers, they go to that point, just like not too super deep in, but just where stuff washes up and they eat that stuff. So like dead and rotting, decaying kelp, fish, crustacean parts, you name it. Um, but I'll show you them. So I lifted up this piece of bark right here. And there's one on the underside. Um, but there they are. They build little shallow burrows just under the stuff that they eat. Or I guess sometimes they're not too shallow. They go like a couple inches deep. Um, maybe sometimes as deep as four, four inches. Um, but I found that's about the limit. Um, but they're very cool. I'll see if I can kind of isolate one. They're kind of... Hard to see like this because they kind of blend in with the sand, to be honest. And uh, the cool thing about these, unlike uh, the Legia species, which a lot of people were getting into for a while, um, these don't need. Uh, so you can see there's them crawling out of the burrows there. Lots of them burrowed all over the place. Um, so they don't need salt water like Legia species. So they just need their sand to be able to like hold shape and be moist. It can be a little bit dry at the top. That's not a big deal. Um, but they do need it to be relatively moist. And um, for food, basically you feed them, you know, use your imagination. Whatever would, you know, you would imagine would uh, wash up at high tide. So I feed them like um, different types of fish foods, dried krill and shrimps and crustaceans, um, dried seaweed, I don't know if I already said seaweed, kelp, that kind of deal, spirulina, the leet, um, all that good stuff. But um, they're really cool. Let me see if I can get my trusty little flashlight. Um, but I will try to get a close-up of one. I'll dig one out. Hold on one second. So here's they are, all macroed up. See how round they are? It's kind of adorable. They've got this really rotund, long shape, almost like they're pregnant or full or something like that. Um, but they always look like this. And they're highly variable. Um, some of them have kind of oranger patterns. Some have more silvery. There's some that are gold or bright orange. Um, highly variable. And, uh, here's a good example. Um, this actually isn't a super pretty one. I have some really nice ones in here. Um, just gorgeous bright orange or gold flaking on them. Um, I have some pictures on my Instagram, which I'll link in the description. Um, so you can get some close-up of some, some, I guess, some prettier examples. I kind of was more picky with those ones. Um... Let me see. Here's one. He's kind of pretty. 
just can't get very close to them. They'll block it out the light. Oh, bye bye. Holes all over the place. There's probably like two or three hundred of them in here, I reckon. Um, I had had their care all wrong, and um, ever since I switched up, I've been having good success with them. I recently re upped on some um, to kind of give my colony a boost. And, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're doing quite well for me. Um, no salt water required. Um, however, they are escape artists, so make sure you have a nice lid that's, like, solid at the top. I don't believe they can climb vertically, um, like, I mean, upside down. Um, but they do climb, uh, the sides. Um, not, well, they climb it well enough. Let's just say that. Well enough to where you should get a lid. Um, but they are pretty clumsy about it. But, uh, yeah. Um, they dig this charcoal, this rotting wood, if you can get actual driftwood. Um, that's all really, really good stuff for them. And, um, if you actually want to pick some of these up, I'm going to do a shameless plug right here, because why not? Um, you can, uh, find some on U.S. Invertebrate Auction this week. This is the last week of auctions. Um, I believe for the year, um, and then everything's done, um, until the, uh, the new year, the new, new year, the 2020. Dig some up, maybe I can find some for you. There's one under there. They're not too, uh, scuttly of an isopod, at least compared to some other species. Sorry guys. I'll cover these up and they'll make new ones relatively quickly. And I don't really disturb them too, too often, so it's not a huge, huge deal. There's a big one. Plop. See how round they get? It's insane. But they're cute. And I also should mention that, um, their common name, I guess, is Commando Isopod, which I think the name's kind of dumb, personally. No offense to whoever decided to name them that. I'm just saying, I think we could do a little better. Um, but yeah, very cute. Um, when you're feeding them, use common sense. Uh, feed seaweed, kelps, fish flakes, krills. Um, oh, give them plenty of ventilation. They need a lot of ventilation since they're on the ocean. There's lots of breezes and stuff. Even if they're under stuff, um, they still need good ventilation. People like to think, oh, they're burrowers. They live in holes. They don't need ventilation. Um, yes, they do. They, they very much do. Um, try not to let their food go bad, bad, but they will eat just about anything. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link in the description for, I'm actually having, uh, I think three or four auctions up this week. Um, so if you want to check those out, I don't know if they're all up right now. I know at least one is live. Um, and I'll put a link to that one and you can just kind of go on the site and look at all the auctions. You have to make an account in order to look at stuff, look at stuff. Um, but once you make an account, you can, uh, look at all the auctions. There's cool stuff out there for everybody like arachnids, um, like scorpions, spiders, tarantulas, that kind of thing. Um, lots of different types of, uh, isopods, uh, there's millipedes, beetles, um, just, a something for everybody on that place. Um, and you can pick up some of these and some of, some of the other rare isopod types that I have. I'm having like two or three types, um, on there that aren't too commonly found. Um, also, the next uh, show I'm doing is going to be Reptilian Nation at the Cow Palace in February. Uh, I'm not sure the exact date right off the top of my head. I probably should have found that out before I started this video, but you know, that's just how I am. But yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and you learned something about them. Once you have their setup correct, you know, um, deep enough sand, uh, the right kind of food and driftwood and ventilation. Um, and you keep the sand, the the right amount of moisture, um, they do well and they're quite active. I know people who have these in display setups and like, um, if you have, I forget what the technical term is, but for like a half water, half land setup, you can use these in kind of the sandy area. Um, and from what I hear, they'll do okay. 
um, at the very least. So yeah, um, if you have any questions about these, feel free to hit me up in the comments. Um, tell me what you want to see. Uh, I might do another care I saw care video this week. Or I might give her a little bit of a break. We'll see. Um, I'll put my Instagram and some of my other info in the description. And, um, you guys can do what you will with that. So yeah, have a good night, guys.